Hello, and welcome to a Dyson Sphere program video. Today we're going to be going over how the various logistics stations work. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. I plan on making many more guides like these in the future. Let's start off by taking a look at the research. So in our technology tree, you're going to go up to here. Planetary Logistics is our first station. These stations take items around the same planet. And this is going to be the first thing that you're going to unlock. Only needs red and blue science, but you're going to need some titanium and silicon to set this up and automate the parts for this. Silicon you can get from stone, but it takes a lot of stone. And you're not going to find pure silicon veins on your starting planet. Titanium you're not going to really find on your starting planet at all. So you're going to have to go back and forth between one of the other planets in your system in order to get that titanium for the planetary logistics. After you unlock the planetary logistics, you're going to go to the interstellar logistics. Now this transports items between planets and it will go between stars once you unlock warpers, but that's actually a little bit later. So interstellar logistics is your first step in you know, not having to go back and forth between your titanium planet. You do need a little bit of the structure matrices, which do require titanium to research. So you will have to go to that titanium planet a couple times in order to unlock, unlock this. You're also going to need titanium for the logistics vessels now. And finally, the last station is the orbital collector. So these are going to allow you to exploit the resources from that gas giant that's right next door to your current starting planet. They're going to need a lot more of the structure matrices, the yellow science. So you're going to want to have a couple interstellar stations going to get your titanium for you. And the last research that I do want to touch on is the space warpers. So these are also going to require a large amount of the structure matrices. They're going to require you make these gravitron lenses which are pretty complicated to make but you're going to be able to unlock the space warper. Space warpers are going to be essentially required if you're going to want to transport resources in between star systems. You can send logistics vessels to other star systems, but it's going to take a very long time for them to get there. So you're going to want to unlock these and ensure that your logistics stations have plenty of space warpers before you set up the uh, interstellar, you know, between stars uh, logistics. Now that we got that out of the way, let's take a closer look at each of our stations. Okay, so let's start off with our planetary logistics station. So let's pull one up. And we'll take a look at this menu. So what you're going to see is three slots on the planetary station. And you can set these to whatever you want. You could do buildings, you could do items. And the same is going to go for the... Uh, interstellar station as well. So I have a titanium vein here, so we're going to set this to titanium. And what you're going to see immediately is that it is set to supply. That means when I put titanium in here, if I have another station that is requesting titanium or set to demand, it's going to take the things from here and bring it to one of those other stations. So supply kind of puts it in the logistics network where it is able to be requested and demand means I'm going to you know, demand it and I have some set to supply which I'm going to undo because I don't want to do that yet. Okay. The stations have three ports on each side as we wait for our autosave. The stations have three ports on each side and you can have stuff go in and you can have stuff come out. If you have stuff come out, you do have to set a filter. So if I press tab, stuff's going to come out. Even if something is set to supply, you can still have stuff go in or out. Same goes with demand. You're also going to need to supply your station with these logistics drones. 
Now they start off with a carrying capacity of 25, and you can upgrade the carrying capacity and flight speed in your upgrade tree. It's going to be on this page, not the other research page, the upgrades. So there's carrying capacity and engine speed. We also have a couple other options down here. So you're going to see these this max power charge. That's going to control the maximum rate at which the station can charge. So these stations do maintain a charge if you just go ahead and connect. It's going to draw a bit of extra power initially, so don't freak out if you know you connect a bunch and your power drains a lot, um, because it's only going to use the charge if the drones are active. So let's put some drones in. And you see, we don't really have anything happening yet because I think all of my other stations are full. So let's put another station here. Let's put a station here. And let's set this one to demand. And then you can see it's going to bring them over to this station, which is pretty nifty. We also have a transport range, so it goes 180 degrees at the maximum. That basically means it can go to the other point on the opposite side of the planet. But if you want to reduce that, you can. I never do, but you can if you want. So if I set it to 90 degrees, it'll only go you know, half the planet, 45. The cone kind of shrinks, so you can do that if you want. We also have this min load of drones. So this basically means if it's at 100%, a drone will not leave until it is at full capacity. So when you start out, a drone will only leave if there are 25 items. If you set it to 10%, even if there are two and a half items, then the drone will leave. So if you have like small stacks of items, it would be good to set to a lower thing. If you have, you know, a high volume of items and you want to conserve on energy, it would be best to, you know, be at that 100%. And then finally, this output cargo stack count, that's a pretty late uh, upgrade. It requires 8,000 of the universe matrices. So this is something that you can unlock, but it's not going to be something that you're going to unlock for a long time. And it basically just means items that come out are automatically stacked. I think that's everything with this guy, so let's move on to the interstellar station. Alright, let's talk about our interstellar stations. So the first thing you're going to notice is you're going to have two extra slots, which is super nice. and these guys are a lot bigger. So, let's set our titanium. And what you're also going to notice is when you set your filter, you're going to have these extra options over here. Local supply works the same way as the planetary stations. It's going to request and demand stuff from stations on the same planet. Remote supply is what you're going to use to request and send things to other planets. So what you can do is you could say, okay, this is my titanium planet. I want, I want local demand and remote supply. What this is going to do is it's going to collect things from this planet and then make it available for other planets. So that's pretty nifty for mining resources on another planet. And then on the opposite end, what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, I'm on my home planet now. I want the titanium on my home planet. I'm going to do a remote demand and a local supply. This will make it available for other logistic stations on the same planet, if that makes sense. Also, you're going to want to make sure that these guys have logistics vessels. 
because the vessels are what take things between different planets. You're also going to need drones, because the drones also take stuff on the same planet. But we know how the drones work, right? You're also going to see space for space warpers, which we'll get to in a sec. Down here in the configurations, you're going to see max charging power, which we're familiar with, transport range of drones, which we're familiar with, and these two new options, transport range of vessels, distance and able to warp. When you start out with these stations, you're going to just be using them to probably get titanium and silicon from one of the other planets since your current planet, your first planet, isn't going to have those veins on there. Once you unlock warpers though, you're going to want to go to other systems and get some of the more rare resources. So that's why we want to make sure that this distance enabled to warp is set correctly and checked. I haven't needed to change this. I've heard though that if you have a bigger orbiting system you might need to to adjust the distance enabled to warp. Um, but you're gonna want to always have this checked because you don't want a logistics vessel trying to go to another star system without a warper because it's going to just take so long. So always make sure this is checked. And then of course at the bottom here we also have minload of vessels which functions the same way as minload of drones. For vessels I'd say, if especially if you're using warpers, you're probably going to want to have this at 100%. But there might be instances where, you know, if you're transporting like buildings or things like that, you could set it to lower. Okie dokie. So with that, let's get into the orbital collectors. Okay, let's talk about orbital collectors. So orbital collectors obviously need to be on a gas giant. They can only be placed along the equator and they need to have eight, ten? Yeah, ten of these little boxes in between of them or two of these giant ones. That's kind of how I that's kind of how I know where to place them. And you're going to want to make sure that you're placing them the minimum distance possible because you're going to essentially be making a ring of these collectors around the equator of your gas giant to get the largest amount of benefit. So, definitely be careful where you put them. There are two kinds of gas giants. Hydrogen and deuterium gas giants and hydrogen fire iced gas giants. And I wouldn't say, you know, one is necessarily better than the other. I wouldn't say that having one over the other means, you know, oh, I got a this kind, I have the hard reset, you know. The deuterium ones are good because deuterium's a pain to make with the fractionating and Fire ice ones are good because they give you graphene, which is very useful. And you can also always fly to another planet system and you know, get other resources there. But what they're going to do is they're going to slowly collect these resources and you're going to need an interstellar station on the other end to send vessels to and fro. The options are very simple, local storage, remote supply, there's really no reason to change off of these. Like I cannot think of a single reason why you would set this to remote storage, and you can't even change that option. So these you kind of just put on the planet, set it and forget it, and then you got a nice supply of hydrogen and deuterium, or hydrogen and fire ice. And that's really it for the orbital collectors. Um, I do have a little bonus one, a bonus building that we'll go over right now. So I know I said there are only three logistic stations, but there's kind of a fourth one. It's these advanced mining machines that they just added, which can go over top your current mining setups, which is pretty insane. And they put stuff in the planetary logistics network. So drones are able to come to this station and pick up stuff. To illustrate that, let's do one of these.
They also have nine input and output ports, so what you could also do is you can, like, do one of these. So this kind of changes, you know, how we set up mining outposts. So what you could do is, if you just need to mine a planet for resources, you could put a bunch of these down, and then you can put in interstellar station, and it's pretty much going to be self-sufficient without really the need for mining machines. You can, you know, do one of these, like, put the mining machines, you know, have them going into the station itself. But, uh, it's pretty wild. They are very expensive to make, though, and require a lot of resources. Let's see where they are. Yes, here. Yeah, you need optical grading crystal and quantum chips and Dyson Sphere parts. So they're definitely a, an end-to-end -end game thing, but I would be remiss if I did not mention them. So I hope you found this video guide helpful. If you did, I'd love it if you could leave a like or subscribe. I plan on making a lot more of these videos in the future. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or stop by one of my live streams. I live stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash billythedoor. Anyway, that's all for me, and take care.